shaping. Okay, we're going to do a little hat shaping yourself today. Now, it's very, very, very possible for you to shape your own hats. Um, a lot of people are afraid to mess their hats up, um, but you can do it um, with minimal effort. Um, there are certain very simple moves that, you know, every hat wearer should know, like things like uh, turning the center crease into a teardrop or lowering a crown or making a crown deeper because you're hitting the roof and you need more, you know, depth. So, you know, you make it deeper. So those three things I think you could do yourself. And I'm going to show you how to do all three. Come on, let's get started. Okay, let me get a hat. Hold on. You always had like this idea. I wanted to have a, uh, a show where I said, you know, a little introduction and I say, let's get started. And the music starts playing. Let's get started. You get what I'm saying? All right, we've got the little glare happening there. Okay. We want to keep the quality up. I'm watching the levels, although I'm speaking quite qu quietly, rather softly. It looks like the levels are all the way up there in the red, so that's a good thing. I've been working on that stuff, guys, trying to get the quality of the content up. Less uh, Frank and Mario videos and more um, straight up hat content. Um, and I do appreciate the subject ideas. I did about three or four of your ideas already, probably more, I think, recently. And um, keep, keep them going. Uh, another thing, if uh, nobody has um, subscribed to my channel, that's a really important thing. Um, there's like a little button. If you look at the YouTube page here, let me see. I don't think anybody ever does it this way. I'll show it to you. Let's say you go to like one of my videos, all right? All right, like my latest uh, guitar video or something. If you look at that YouTube page, there's a little thing that says subscribe right there. You see it, subscribe? It's usually like right under where like the thumbs ups and stuff are. Okay, subscribe basically means this. Um, you become kind of like a member of my channel, so to speak. Um, you get first dibs on video. So pretty much when I come out with a new video, it'll be right at the top of your, you know, at the bottom where you hit subscribe or trending or, you know, uh, whatever, library. When you hit subscribe at the bottom, my video will go right to the top. So you'll, you'll always know when I'm getting it. You could also hit the bell icon if you want a little notification. Like if you want a little flag, like, you know, on the top of Kevin just came out with a new video. It's like a second. You get that? Um, you hit subscribe and then you hit the bell icon. Um, okay, so subscribe is easy to find. It's like, okay, here's my video. There's like the thumbs up and stuff. Right below it there is subscribe. See it? Okay, so you can hit that, you know. I can't hit it because I can't subscribe to my own channel. But um, right there, um, there's another thing. There's a bell. So if you find the bell, you'll know even more about my, you know, videos coming. There's no cost to you. It doesn't cost you anything. There's no commercials playing or any, like, bad side to this for you. The only thing is that it helps me. Um, when I get more and more subscribers, it helps me to sort of keep the lights on here. Um, basically, it gets me closer and closer to the point where eventually I could actually, like, earn money from this, you know, channel. So, you know, right now it's more of something I do just to, I don't know, enrich the scene. And I think I also do it to help the business, but uh, mainly I do it because I've gotten so involved in it now that my viewers sort of depend on it, you know. So, um, you know, eventually I can make some money off this site, uh, you know, if it blows up at some point and I get like a million viewers. Right now I have like 5,400 subscribers, you know, and there's a lot of channels that have millions, like actually millions, you know, plenty of them, like little kids who open up toys and, you know. So if I can get some subscribers, basically I can actually earn some revenue and um, I could get a better mic, I could get some, you know, charts and animations, some real photos done, I could even do some field trips and stuff where I could maybe, you know, uh, interview some people or go to hat factories and stuff. At this point, I don't really have the money for it, but, um, you know, all you guys got to do is hit subscribe. It's right down there. Just touch it, and it goes red or something. It's, it turns, like, subscribed. 
And that's it. You may never know anything else except the fact that you'll see my video a little bit more when you're, when you're you know, scrolling through YouTube, um, which you probably want anyway. Um, oh, man, i got to tell you, I have this thing here. It's like uh, from Omaha Steaks. You know about them? They're like the first butcher steak place in the country, I think. They have this uh, website thing where you can order it, and you could actually get them right off of Amazon. They got this thing called... Um, what are they? Caramel apple tarts. Dude, I'm eating it right now. Mm. It's essentially a piece of hot apple pie. Really good apple pie with caramel in it. So there's some caramel. It comes out of the oven like really hot. You know, like that hot apple pie thing. Almost like the McDonald's thing, but like way better. Um, Get them. You stick them in the freezer, which is really cool, and you don't even have to like defrost them. Just tape tape one out, and then you just basically defrost it, and that's it. They got all these weird things like that. Let me show you this other one. They got these like potatoes au gratin and stuff. You know, it's not all meat. It's potatoes au gratin, and it's actually pretty good. You know, and you pull it out of the freezer, you stick it in the toaster oven, bam. Not hard for guys like me. Omaha sticks, oh, they're good. They got little chocolate mousses. Their best thing, I think, is their cheesecake sampler. You get this little thing right off of Amazon. Omaha sticks, mini cheesecakes. Dude, it's good. The best one was the plain cheesecake, the cherry cheesecake, and the almond one. The Nutella one was okay. It's not as good as it sounded. It's a little overly sweet for me, but uh, it's awesome. All right, reaching for my guitar because I want to play, but we're going to talk about some hat stuff. All right. There are some shapes, um, getting back to it, if you do subscribe to me, um, I really do appreciate it, and I promise you there is no downside, no catch or anything. It just basically helps me, and it helps you get notified of, you know, my channel. And if you can, also hit the bell, too. Um, that doesn't help me anymore, but it also helps you to just know when my video just got dropped. So when I drop a video now, you'll get like a little flag saying, you know, like when you get a message, ding, Kevin dropped the video. That's it. So that's what the bell does. You hit the bell after. Okay, here's some shapes you could do yourself. The first thing is deepening a crown. Okay, you know when the center crease or like a cattleman crease, like an open road kind of thing, the top hits your head and you just don't know, you don't have enough depth because that thing there is banging into your skull and you want to bring the hat down more, but you can't because you're hitting this roof of the hat. Okay. That is super common. If that happens to you a lot, it's because you're either a tall person or your head itself is just tall or maybe just tall on the top part. It doesn't mean you're like shaped odd or anything. It's just everybody's shaped a little different. Some people are actually round head, some people more long head. Um, it's like people with feet, you know, wide feet, narrow feet. Everybody's different. If you're tall or if your head is a little tall, you're just a big person or something, you need more headroom. So you need this bubble on top. You see the bubble? Okay, what that is, it's essentially, it's a crease, okay? When everybody else sees it, it's just a crease, but it's giving you depth inside, okay? Just the amount of depth you need. So in other words, here's my crease. I stick my head in there, okay? I trace around the head, okay? First thing you do is steam it, soften it, the area right here with the steam. Stick your head or your hand in there. Don't burn your head. Make sure you feel it first. It's not too hot. Okay. Hold it, hold it, hold it until it's totally dry. You might have to hold it here maybe 60 to 100 seconds. I would say just hold it like this and just start watching TV or something, you know, because it takes like at least 30 seconds. I'm going to say 30 to 60 seconds then it's dry. Um, another trick is to have a, a fan ready, blowing in the other direction or something, and then as soon as you steam it, you steam it, you make your bubble, then you zap it in the fan, shh, you cool it. It's like zap freezing, it, you know, flash freezing it. And what that does is it sets, it sets the stiffener, the steam, everything is like set in from the cooling. Okay, so this is the easiest one. You take your hand like this, like a karate chop, you put it inside the hat, okay, and you just basically steam it here on the outside, get this whole margin, everything steamed, but not around there, just the inside, all steamed. Then 
take your karate chop hand from the inside and push it up into a nice kind of oval shape and hold still count just leave it alone okay if it doesn't need your hand if you could let go that's really cool too most of the times you can't um, my hat's very soft so it just kind of stays but if your hat's stiff yeah you're gonna have to soften it and then push it up hold it hold it hold it don't worry about burning your hands you won't but be careful if you're going to use your head like that you can burn your scalp so touch it make sure it's okay then put it on trace around take a look at it if it's not even go back make it look pretty you can make it a circle you can make it an oval you can make it a pear shape i like kind of a pointed oval like a pear that's my favorite shape one of those bubbles um now nobody's going to see it unless they're way up on top like Godzilla or like an eight foot guy. The only way they'll see it is if you wear your hat like this or something. They'll see the back, you know, like that. But nobody will see that bubble. Don't worry about it. It's a fit thing. Basically your hat's up here. Now that you fix it, your hat's down here. Nobody sees the bubble. They just see the good fit. All right, that's number one. The next thing I want to teach you how to shape is how to lower your crown. I've talked about this pretty recently, but I'm going to show you again. Okay, lowering your crown. Let me see if I can show you on this hat here. Okay, you lower your crown. You get everything to the nice natural position like that, the two pinches. Okay, this works on pretty much any shape. You're going to deal with just this area in the front. That's the part that makes a hat look high or low, right here. Okay, it doesn't matter what you do back there. That's more for the depth of the, you know, your head. If you need more depth for your head or something, you do it back there. But it doesn't make it look high or low. Only this front little chunk does. This part here. Maybe a little in here too. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this down. But I'm going to take that U shape and I'm going to just make a little bit lower U shape. So in other words, I'm going to lower it by tucking it into itself now. Pushing it back. Down, kind of. You know what I mean by tucking it into itself, like pushing down, folding it back. And I'm going to make it look pretty like a U shape, but just a lower U. Okay? So let's see how big it is, or how tall this is. So. Alright, it's about that tall. Alright, let's see if we can bring it down to the height of myself on there. Okay, tuck it in, push it back, lowering the crown, lowering the crown. I'm also dealing with the pinches and just sort of neatening them up too. Let's see how low we are now. Okay, it's almost there. You don't want to go nuts, basically. You know. A little shows a lot. But yeah, you could lower it technically as much as you want. Alright, so that's where we lowered it to go back you make it look pretty like a nice U shape symmetrical then you zap it with hot steam hit this with steam let it dry don't touch it okay uh, go for symmetry work the pinches too like this you know get everything nice and neat okay so now you saw where it was before let's see where it originally was there so you could lower these really easy. It's not that hard. Um, if your hat's soft like mine, you don't really need steam. You just need steam, steam to set it at the end to lock it in. Unless you just want to lower it temporarily like me. I'm just lowering it here, but my hat's blocked to there. Yeah. Um, whatever you steam in is a permanent memory. That's why you do it. So right now I've got this crease. It's sort of weird. That's what's steamed in. And... If you just very gently feel it, just gently, those are the, the creases I have, the pinches. Now, if I want to change that memory, I manipulate it, do what I want, and hit it with steam and let it dry. That's my new memory. It's the stiffener, the plasticky shell, that stiffener that cools with the steam and hardens again over your new shape. That's what's blocking your hat and changing it. 
It has less to do with the hot steam, the heat, or the moisture, more to do with you just melting that little plastic shell and um, you know, changing the shape and then letting it cool again in the place that you chose. So yeah, stiffener is essential. If your hat is too soft, this is not gonna work. Um, sometimes it works. Hats like this are, you know, like really responsive even when they're soft, but that's rare. Um, I'm gonna say if your hat feels like this, most likely you can't steam it and get any results. Uh, let me show you another hat. Okay. Now this hat's also soft, but not as soft. little bit of body that it's holding itself up. It's not falling down. That's enough. You can actually hear it, you know. A little bit of stiffness. I'm not even saying stiff. It's soft, you know. There's like a little body there that's holding it in place. It's like they flashed it with this spray. It locked into place. And then if you want to fix that, you got to melt it again, adjust it, let it cool again. You get the concept? Okay. So now we know how to do two things. Deepen a crown and lower a crown. Those are two really important things. And you could do it yourself. The third thing we're going to learn how to do is the teardrop from a center crease. Now a lot of people in the industry do this. It's like if you have a hat with a center crease on, you can just teardrop it while it's on your head. It's kind of like a I see this or not, but okay. So what I'm doing with the center crease is I am breaking it down in the back flat. So I want this to be a little lower and flat. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put it on my chest, upside down, and I'm gonna go like that, flatten the back. So it looks flat. I just lowered it flat. Okay. Once you do that, carefully hold it. Put it on your head. Watch what I'm doing. You can also steam the inside first, but it's usually not necessary. You could usually turn a center crease to a teardrop with no steam. Put it on your head. Trace around the back like a horseshoe should go down a little but not too much that's a really typical mistake I do it a lot sometimes I, I angle it too much so just angle it very little it's going down towards the back a little and when it gets to the end I like to bring that down just a little at the end so it's like so it's like you lower the very end that's part of making a teardrop for me I like that it goes up to the highest point then straight and then down in the middle. That's part of the shape to me. You know, so you could teardrop it two ways. You could, all right. You could just flatten out the back, stick your head in, or you can Just put the hat on, center crease, push it out, push the crease out with your head, and trace behind it, kind of like a horseshoe shape, I'm going around like a letter U or a C. Doing it blind, a lot of times it comes out too low on the back. It's something you get better at, but you know, just can't be too aggressive with those uh, horseshoe shapes. So those are three crown shapes you can do yourself no excuses you could just do it now you know the whole concept of steaming how to do three very important utilitarian moves that I do in the hat shop all the time can you lower the crown that to where people say I don't like the crown on that it's horrible I could lower it they look at each other like what this guy gave me a line what no really I could actually lower it for you if you're you know, zeroing in on that hat, you want to see it lower, let me know. I won't just lower it, you know, if you're not going to buy it, but if you're considering it, you know, let me know. So I'll do a small move like, like this. 
maybe I'll use a tiny bit of steam or no steam, and I'll show them how it lowers, you know? And then they'll be like, okay, that's great. And then we steam it and we lower it for real. So that's a super popular. A lot of times people just can't wear a center crease or a catwoman because they're too tall and they bang into the roof. In a soft hat, it's not such an issue. It just pops out. But with a Western hat that's hard, it just balances up on the top of your head like all weird and just doesn't go down. And people don't know if it's too tight or too loose. It feels loose because it's not falling right off your head, but it also feels really tight because you can't get it down enough. So you don't know which it is. It's basically too shallow. The way to tell how this hat fits is you take the crown, pop it out. Even if it's really hard western, pop it out temporarily. It doesn't hurt. Put it back on. Now the top isn't obstructing you. You can tell how it's fitting right around the temple. That move alone is worth the whole video. So essentially, if a hat is fitting you like a western, you're hitting the top and you don't know if it's tight, or loose or whatever because it's so shallow temporarily pop out the shape like this put it back on that's what I do when I'm selling it and I say ah you see it's the, it's the depth this hat is not tight it's actually pretty good maybe a tad loose but pretty good and it's a depth issue see your head's way up there so we got to just teardrop it or make a bubble or do something different most of the time you know it's it's a western hat we just make a little bubble in the center there like right in the center here, like a long sort of sausage shaped one. Nobody sees it because it's way up there. Plus you can get rid of it when you're not wearing it. It just pops up when your head goes in there, which is the amazing thing. You know? Your head goes in there, you get the bubble, your head's off, it's gone. So, what I just said, okay? You can deepen a western hat yourself, it's no big deal. Want to know how it fits? Pop out the crown and see how it fits at the temple first, around the sides, adjust it, tighten it, get it right, and then work on the depth of the crown. Remember, fit is not just size, bigger and smaller, okay? It's depth and it's size and it's length too. Sometimes people have a long head, they hit right here and like one bone hits it, but the rest of the hat is okay. So you just gotta give it a little you know, stretch. There's so many different factors, not just size is size. So, all right. Do I have a guitar plugged in here? I believe I do. Thank mm -hmm. you.